of the following is the most likely cause of these symptoms. A 25-year-old woman presents uh, with a three-month history of bloating, abdominal uh, pain, and diarrhea. The symptoms usually occur 30 minutes to two hours after consuming milk or dairy products. She has no other significant medical history, and she denies any recent travels or antibiotic use. She um, has not experienced any weight loss or fever. Um, physical examination shows mild abdominal tenderness without rebound tenderness or guarding. Laboratory studies reveal a normal complete blood count, and stools are negative for parasites, ova, and leukocytes. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the symptoms? Um, it is not celiac disease. That is for gluten and, and um, bread issues, um, gastroenteritis. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's, yeah, no weight loss or fever. So no, that would be a fever. In inflammatory bowel disease, that's going to be your Crohn's and ulcerative. So no. Decreased breast border enzyme activity is lactase. And this is lactose uh, intolerance here. So that'll be that one. And then irritable bowel syndrome, that's going to be like, I would I always think about it and I could be wrong with this, is like back and forth between like diarrhea and constipation, diarrhea and constipation. And so there's nothing here with that. And this is, I'll be confident with say D. Good. Love it. Love the confidence, right? Love the explanation. Um, it's getting better and better, right? You're putting it all together. Um, obviously this is a longer stem. I always say, you know, um, you've worked through it beautifully, but with longer stems, you always got to worry about any kind of buzzwords, things like that, because it's going to lead you to the wrong direction. The longer the stem, right. The easier it is to look at things holistically, but the harder it is to dodge like the landmines that are buzzwords. Right. Yeah. So, so definitely for sure you work through that. Well, you got a diagnosis, you stuck with it. And then you pick the answer that correlates with your diagnosis. Um, but yeah, so just a couple of things I want to kind of add to this with uh, irritable bowel syndrome. There are two types, right? Like you said, right. Either you're too constipated or you're, you have too much, you have diarrhea and usually remember that, um, their stomach, uh, um, um, what is it called? Their, uh, stomach, not pain, I guess, pains or discomfort gets better when they defecate. Right. Just remember that. Oh, um, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. So they'll say, you know, usually it's a younger woman. Um, you know, she says that she goes to the restroom. Um, she has stomach pain. But as you know, she goes to the restroom or after she goes to the restroom, she feels better. That's usually irritable bowel syndrome. And then what do you think if I took a biopsy of something that has irritable bowel syndrome? Do you know what um, what it would come back as? I actually have no idea. No. So you got to remember this because it's the odd duck out um, usually comes back normal no issues. So we don't actually understand oh. physiologically um, why irritable bowel syndrome happens. Um, just know that irritable bowel syndrome also um, correlates with a lot of um, psychiatric disorders and also, um, you know, chronic pain disorders like fibromyalgia. That makes sense. Depression, yeah. Right. We like you, you'll start to realize there's a collection of some uh, diseases that we don't actually fully understand, which is why we created that disease. Does that make sense? Right. It's like, Oh, yeah. I have this, you know, 1% of patients that come to a GI clinic and they keep complaining of stomach pain, can't find a reason, but they feel better after, you know, going to the restroom. Okay. Let's just call that irritable bowel syndrome, but we don't, you know, we have no medication. Sometimes stool softeners help. Sometimes they don't. So it's kind of things like that that you um, learn about. Okay, cool.